So I think one of the most interesting things I wanted to raise with you is that I understand you started teaching yourself improvisation at the age of 16. Is that correct? Uh, a little bit before, probably. But uh, yes, I had a, a, a classical course, you say, mm -hmm. uh, for about learning the piano, how to make sound the piano, the physical aspect of it, etc. But about improvisation, yeah, it's mainly as autodidact, how do you say that, uh, by yourself learning. Uh, listening to some records, as it's a tradition in these musics to, to learn by listening to the records and try to reproduce what, to understand and to reproduce what's, uh, on the, to what's on the, the, the music, the records, the original music. What music uh, in your formative years at that time of your life, what kind of musicians and, uh, and their work was making a big impression on I think that we are from a generation where we have been exposed to so many, so many sounds, so many quantity, uh, such a big amount, uh, such a big quantity of informations uh, that the deal is to to try to find yourself in all these informations <laughs> because there are too many informations now. <laughs> so uh, it means also a lot of. Um, Music to listen, and uh, a musician from my generation has to assimilate different musics music from the 50s, music from the 40s, music from the 70s, music from the 80s, and now music from the 90s, maybe you know what I mean. So uh, it's tough to, to say a name. I, I can just say that I really feel in myself this uh, double identity as the genetic one, which is definitely European, and my, uh, my deep uh, love of the European composers of the history, but also my love of the Afro-American music. I'm not born in uh, America, but I mean, uh, all this uh, Afro-American uh, process that, that brought all these musics to the world. And uh, so I'm trying to find um, always my place in this too, too, too big love. But it's tough to find a name to say, because um, there are so many names, as I was um, telling, also some uh, South American names, some people like Egberto uh, Quismonti or Elis Regina or Juan Gilberto or Jobim have been some big uh, sources of inspiration too. But of course, many, many great artists from, from American music, whatever it's, I don't know, but Powell or, or Duke or, or, or Parker or Mingus or anything. But um, we're a mix of all that. It's like cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to find the good spices together. So the, the problem is not to put all the spices in the same pot, <laughs> but try to find the good ones that goes together. That's, that's what it's about now, I think, about creative musics. Let's talk a little bit about the Song, Song, Song album. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, uh, I guess, the, what draws the pieces together? There are French classics on this, there are some of your own compositions. What, um, what was the yeah. thought process of bringing all that music together? Well, the idea, it's, it's, it's very hard to say in, in, in English, empirique, uh, pragmatic, empirique, like uh, by experience. It's not, it's not like, a, I mean, things came little by little. It's not like I, ha I wanted that and I did that, you know. It's, we're doing, uh, it's like a work in progress, you know. Uh, the, the, the idea at the beginning was maybe just to, to do what I'm doing a lot of uh, on stage, like play some, some French songs, or not especially French, but some songs that have a big uh, evoca evocative power, you say that, evocative? Uh, like this one. I'm that I'm, that this Jacques Brel song, um, Ne me quitte pas, don't leave that is also famous from Nina Simon, Nina Simon and, uh, and in fact it's after having heard Charlie Horn singing that song that I said, oh that could be good on the piano, p just piano. So I like to play this, this very powerful melodies just uh, without text without the voice uh, just because I like to, to, to work on the piano as a as a, as a how could I say to, 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 to play the lines on the piano as if it was uh, vocal and uh, so that was one one thing I wanted to, to, to show on this album and uh, about the uh, about all the tracks where there are some where there is some voices um, in that case, only compositions, which is a little bit different because usually, you know, I don't know here, but in France, you have a lot of uh, singers sometimes who do a tribute album to, uh, for example, Jacques Brel or something, and who, who who sing their own way, you know, many 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 standards from the from the from the song repertory, and so 
I, I couldn't do that because I'm not a singer, so I, I, won't, I won't sing the Makita Pa. Of course, it's too, too strong for me. <laughs> and uh, so I like the idea to play these famous songs on the instruments and to play my songs, new songs. Maybe they get famous, but they're not famous yet. You know, it's like <laughs> new material uh, with, with voices. That was the idea to find this this balance. And anyway, I, I love to compose. I need to compose. This is an important part of my activity. So uh, it would be tough for me to 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 do an album without any compositions stuff. Uh, Melody Gardot is one of the uh, bigger names that collaborates with you. Definitely, yeah. How did she come into the project? Well, there was, uh, in that case too, that was very empirique. So, sorry, I don't know the name in English, but very, just by, by chance in a way. Uh, we met two years ago. The good thing was that, that was by a common friend of her and of me in Paris. Um, uh, a friend of her who wanted to try a song. And she said, oh, Melody Gardo could be here. Could you come at my place and we check the song? So the good point is that that was totally out of a mediatic context, you know, uh, which is often about Melody, you know, she's often with many people around. So that was very quiet. Uh, just just uh, this third person, Melody and I, and, uh, <coughs> Uh, to check a song, and I was at that time I was writing this song that I, that she's singing on the album, like do -do 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 -do, this song that she's singing. <laughs> And I was working on that song these days, and I was so during a break, I was just doing what I'm doing now, just checking, you know. And she was in the kitchen with some champagne and caviar a little bit. <laughs> and what's that song? It's lovely. I love it. What is it? So I explained to her, it's just something. Oh, I want to hear it with the text. And she loved the text. I mean, there was this was uh, the music. I wrote the music from the text of Christophe Musek, who is an incredible French author about writing. And uh, and so that's it. I mean, she fell in love with the song, and so we kept in contact, you know, uh, month after month. And uh, when uh, she she even thought about maybe putting it in uh, her album, w was out from it, for, for, but that was not going with the rest of the album, who is more in the Brazilian vibe, you know, the last album she did. So uh, so on a, when this album was in how do I say gestation. When I was working on it, I just suggested that to her, and she said, yeah, let's do it, baby. It's just a question of time, of schedule and everything, but, and that's it. Okay. Let, um, let's talk a bit about ballads as opposed to um, fast and complex pieces. You have many of bo much of both in S your record. Say it again, I don't understand. Ballads, playing ballads, vis-a-vis -vis playing fast. Oh, pieces. Uh, mm -mm. can you talk about the different levels of satisfaction you get from playing both? Good question. It's not often. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I think that could I say all? Yeah, it's true that I like this uh, double identity of uh, the. Um, the, uh, sorry, it's but just about English to find the words in English. It's tough. Um, L'être intérieur, uh, what is inside yourself, which is more the ballad aspect, to introspection, I would say, and uh, the the brilliant aspect, fast and uh, everything. And I think in, if, if you if you if you check that, I mean, in all the history of music, most of the time, great creators. Uh, I, I, it's not that I define myself as a great creator, but I just you know we just trying to be <laughs> so um, all the all the great creators I have this often double identity in the romantic European music the famous one is Robert Schumann who has his two characters uh, Eusebius and uh, Florestan which are the two uh, cr romantic characters Eusebius is the you know the, the when, when he does mm, mm, all the, th the, the very Introspective character and and and, and romantic with <laughs> and 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 the and on the other aspect of romantic music is very very uh, strong and active and you know uh, and um, heroic and uh, like the, the Chopin uh, all this thing very powerful very virtuoso and etc. So. In, in, and it's the same in jazz music or in the blues, I would say, you know, there is, there is the aspect, there is this uh, introspective aspect that you can find in, 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 in many ways of playing ballads, for example, or at least something that comes from the heart, very and, uh, and the other 
aspect which is more bright and, and vitro is also something very exciting but it's it's like we always try to to play with this too same thing with composing whatever it's classical uh, composers like Beethoven or 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 or, or, um, or in Duke Ellington music to, to to speak about one of the great masters of, of American music, where, where, where you have this uh, this two this two like Yin and Yang, you know, <laughs> these two these two aspects of of life, you know, and uh, so yes, it's always very exciting to 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 go from one side to other another. I couldn't say that I prefer one side to another. I can say that. Uh, it depends of the mood of the day, of the mood of the set, if you're doing a concert, of the mood of, you know, but it's true that on my album, uh, on my albums, I like to, to find a balance between this, uh, this, uh, these two things. I mean, I don't know if it answers your question. Yes. <laughs>